Hey, how do we both maximize your damage output and also avoid damage from your enemies in different scenarios in FPS games? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Let's go. So in this, there are two major sections that we're going to be talking about. The first is mirror slash strafe aiming, and then we'll talk about dodging, which you can skip to with the timestamps on screen. This video also is only going to be covering games with a long time to kill and a relatively high fire rate. The techniques will only use ground movement and not any game specific abilities or techniques. Let's start on how to be able to maximize the amount of damage you can output by moving to increase your accuracy. We can do this through a thing called strafe aiming. Strafe aiming is defined as the ability to change direction whenever and only when the target you're aiming at changes direction. Most of this section is influenced by the amazing strafe aiming document created by Aimer7, which you can view in the description down below. The two major movements only use the two horizontal movement directions out of the eight total, with the first form being mirroring, where you are matching the movement so that when your opponent goes left on your screen, you move left in the same direction, and the same goes when they go right. This is the easiest technique to aim with, and you and your enemy's movement speed, relatively, is mostly staying in the same place of the screen, so only really minor mouse movements to adjust to stay on the target. But this also leads to a smaller margin of difference in terms of accuracy and damage between people involved, compared to the other strafe forms. So it's a good technique to use if your enemy is not really shooting back or they're in a position to miss a lot of their shots. The second major one is anti-mirroring, which as the name implies is the opposite to mirroring. So when your enemy goes left on your screen, you move to the right, and same logic when they go left. Anti-mirroring does the anti of the previous, and the enemy's relative speed on your screen is two times the movement speed. This is a good way to counter people mirroring as well, and can be used as a simple dodging technique. Now, for the two minor strafe techniques with their own two variations. First one is half sideways mirroring. There exists two of this technique, both involving diagonal directions. The first one is when you go forward plus left, whenever your enemy goes left, and you go backwards plus right, whenever your enemy goes right. The second one is the mirror image of this one, as you go backward left whenever your enemy goes left, and forward right whenever they go right. The relative speed of your enemy on your screen is 0.23 times the movement speed. So the target is almost motionless. This explains why this strafe form is so hard to read and aim with. Reading your movement is slightly easier for him than it is for you to read him. This is by far the best strafe aim form to use to be precise at long ranges as it cancels most of the apparent motion of the target for you to aim at. The second and last minor strafe aim form is half sideways anti-mirroring. Again, there exist two of them which also involve the diagonal directions. The first one is when you go forward plus right whenever your enemy goes left and you go backwards plus left whenever your enemy goes right. Again, the second one is the mirror image of this backward right whenever your enemy goes left, forward left when your enemy goes right. This also makes it harder than anti-mirroring on smoothness and mouse control. The relative velocity of your enemy in this strafe aim form is 1.707 times the movement speed, which is kind of a bit slower than anti-mirroring. It also has the same advantage as anti-mirroring. Using these diagonals against someone who is moving left and right makes it also easier to read for him than it is for you as your absolute velocity on the background is lower than his, which influences your reading skills. Most people are not smooth enough or precise enough to track diagonals properly though. Now, these are the basic forms of strafe aim and there are many more complex forms, but they do require some practice. And the final benefits of these minor strafe aim forms is that they can make your movement reading even more hard as the apparent velocity changes as you go further from your enemy, as you rotate from moving your mouse. They also make vertical angles easier and makes it harder for you to get hit from above as you move in a two-dimensional plane thanks to the diagonal. One downside of these techniques though is that it's easy to predict and when your enemy has better mouse control and aim compared to you while performing these major and minor strafe aim forms, which just like I said in the mirroring thing, is that you might be getting very close in the ending health 
as it as it doesn't really throw off other people's aim. So we have to introduce a new technique to purposely avoid damage and use common aiming mistakes against your opponent to gain the least amount of damage received. So let's talk about this technique. It is quite simple in its basics. Change direction whenever you get hit so that you maximize the time that they use to reacquire their crosshair on you, which can lower their accuracy and damage output. The way we know if they're hitting may change from game to game, but you can use things like damage indicators, if that be audio or visual, bullet trails or a beam, knockback if you're getting hit, and many more things in some games. The next part of this technique is the opposite of changing direction, and it is to keep moving in one direction so that you maximize the time when your opponent is trailing their crosshair behind you, so that the result of this should be quick fast strafes when they are being reactive and hitting you, and doing longer strafes when they are trailing. The issues that this technique can run into is the speed in which that you can change directions efficiently, which isn't always a significant issue unless at the high levels when they're really reactive. But it should be something to think about depending on the game, like if the ground acceleration is faster, the minimum strafe distance can be much lower and the opposite when it is slow. So you need to incorporate some other techniques to go around this problem. When the distance between your changes of direction is smaller than your hitbox, the enemy doesn't really have to move their crosshair from the center of you to hit constantly, so it is important to take that into account and try and make the minimum strafe distance larger than one hitbox in diameter if they're reliably hitting you. So now we've covered these two big techniques. They both can be applied to different situations to maximize your damage output and minimize the receiving damage. For most of the time, I'll use the dodging technique to minimize the damage received, plus then aiming to that movement, and then use mirroring when the enemies are in positions where it's hard for them to hit me or they're not really shooting me. Example of this is when the enemy's in the air, where it's really hard to aim at someone at the ground, and they move in a constant horizontal speed, or when they're just not able to shoot you, when you're like behind a shield in Overwatch, or on high ground, or they're just not really focusing you. Each technique has their benefits and downsides, so hope you've learned the differences and benefits and downsides of each. Hope you guys have enjoyed and learned a bit. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about. So make sure to subscribe and like the video if you did. My other social media is also in the description, so go follow those if you've made it this long in the video. Just like any of my other videos, I'm open to feedback to improve my content and the quality of everything. So feel free to comment or DM me any feedback you have. See ya.